Hey, everybody. Hey, Monk of Destiny. Hey, Rapallo. Rapallo Games. And hello, uh... O Pulsar. How's everybody doing today? Hey, Erotasami. So, uh, today I said we would be working on mixing and mastering. Hey, filthy underling. <laughs> Everyone has such great names. Um... So yeah, today we're going to do some mixing and mastering, but first there's still a few things I want to add to this piece. So we're going to start off by doing um, probably a little bit more editing to this piece that you've heard uh, the last two sessions. And then we will go move on to mixing and mastering, and, and my goal today is to finish this piece off 100%. Uh, that'd be really cool. And we'll see how we can do. <clears throat> Hey, Arc Systems! Alright, alright, we don't need to hear flappy cookies anymore. Boop. Let's remove that. Yeah, um, so let's play the, the, the track as it is right now, and then uh, we'll, I'll talk about the couple of things that I want to add. Uh, I kind of, it doesn't feel like a full, like a, a cohesive piece yet. Um, has a bunch of elements that, that kind of work, but they don't, they don't make, uh, like a, they don't tell a story in the way that I want it to. And I'll, and I'll get into that, but let's listen to it first. Uh, here's the entire piece, uh, like a bird's eye view of it. Um, that's muted. This thing's still going. Let's, let's see what this is so we can label it properly. String orchestra. Give it a color. This color hasn't been used. Okay. Uh, let me let's, let's listen to the whole thing. Hey, Azimuth.
Okay, it's pretty cool. Uh, but I feel it does not, from starting from this point going on, I feel like it needs to escalate more, like uh, get more dramatic as it goes. And it doesn't really, like, like when this melody here drops out, it doesn't, it should be an increasing in energy, uh, but instead it's sort of decreasing. So we're gonna we're gonna add more percussion as it goes to to add more drama to it and more energy, and then we're also gonna change the last like couple of measures here uh, so that it's an even more dramatic rise to the end. <clears throat> So let me let me listen to this again, starting from here. This is good. No, there will not be any banjo in this. And hi, Master Sword. Um, okay, so. We could do, okay, so I have a couple of different ideas. Like we could do like some kind of kind of like industrial thing, like industrial percussion that that jumps in maybe here or maybe midway through this melody and then steps up again here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some markers here. Uh, Why is it a seven? I must have accidentally placed that. Okay, let's move marker one. The key points of, of like escalation I want here and here. Let's do, let's make that a two. Maybe we'll just get rid of this. Come on, yeah, yeah. And maybe a key point, maybe an ex escalation point here. I'm not really sure. Once we once we start adding stuff, uh... it'll make more sense. So, okay, so one way that I've done these these kind of things where I'm like, oh, I need this, like, kind of interesting, possibly glitchy, like, industrial stuff. Um, one way of doing it is I get pre-made loops and then I mangle them to death. Uh, that is a fun and quick way to get, like, interesting sounds that's still sort of, like, still your own kind of sound because you've... you've Generally, you take the, the, the pre-made loop and you sort of mangle it to a point where it's, like, unrecognizable. That's one way to do it. Or I can, like, write my own thing, which is, of course, also great. 
let me let me see here. Let me see what we have. We have the evolve. Hey, X system. Move this camera over a little, huh? Hey, Leotex. Seeing some new names, welcome. Um, if, you, if you're new here and you're not really sure about what's going on, um, feel free to ask. I will happily answer. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ben and I write music for video games and Every week I do this show where I write music and write music live and talk about it. Right now we're finishing up a piece. This session is going to be like finishing off this piece that we've been working on. Um, I spent the last two episodes work, like building this from scratch, and now we're going to finish it up and then mix and master it, hopefully all today. That's the idea, anyway. Hey, we got this, this, no, no. What's this sound like? This is kind of fun. Uh, Halley Scal asks, have you been using Omnisphere 2 in your projects and what's your feeling about it? Uh, I've been using Omnisphere a lot since I got it and I love it. I almost... Well, I definitely wish that I had gotten it earlier, that I had, like, bit the bullet and purchased it a long time ago, because it is really nice, and it's really easy to use, and it sounds amazing. It's definitely... <clears throat> it's definitely an, uh, an interesting alternative to getting the complete bundle. <clears throat> if you can only buy one, it's a... Uh, I've compared it to the complete bundle. It's not the same thing. Like they're not they're not like the 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 complete bundle technically covers more ground. Uh but Omnisphere sounds so good and is so fun to play with that you might I don't know, you might get a better use out of the Om Omnisphere. I'm not sure. This might not, it sounds cool, but it might not be what I'm, what I need for this. Uh, Rapallo Games asks, are you still wondering about the Martin Acoustic or did you get it already? Nah, I haven't gotten anything yet. Um, that was recommended to me by a friend who plays guitar, <clears throat> Nabil, who you might have seen on other streams recently. Uh... He is a very accomplished musician, and he told me to get that one because he had played it and he liked it. And it's like a small, it's not like the full body guitar, and I'm kind of a small guy, and like the full size guitars are just too big for me. I can't like play them well. Uh, and that's like a, a mid sized guitar, and he said it sounds really good, and so I was like, well, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll get that one. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't really made any decision on it. Hey, Shev Shevakai, is that it? Hello. Uh, we're working on the piece that we started a couple weeks ago. Um, we are finishing it up and then mixing and mastering it. Um... Yeah, everyone, when I posted that on Twitter, everyone was like, Martins are great. So uh, it seems like there's a lot of agreement on that.
Well, we'll play we'll play it again so you can hear it again, Shavakai, in just a second. I'm trying to find some kind of fun percussive kit that will fit this what I'm looking for, and I'm having a bit of a hard time deciding on what to get. Let's uh, let's play this again, and I'll and I'll think about it. I have a much harder time choosing percussion than I do like synths. So, let me... Okay, so one thing that I am very sad about is that... Okay, so Evolve, this library, came with a bunch of these pre-made loops, which I don't, don't really use. But you have, like... Okay, I'll, I'll just load them up so you can see. Like, Electrotech. You get these little, like, oh, they're fun. And they sound really good. And you could like, you know, combine them and you'd get cool rhythms. But they're not really yours, right? So it's like... Notice, you know, it's not, not great to use them. Um, but it had this really cool thing in the expanded content where it... It had everything, all those loops beat sliced for you. And then you could just load up an individual loop and then you could play it. However, it never works anymore and I don't know why. I've never been able to figure it out, but the, but the uh, beat slices are broken. But I use that a lot in FTL and I really like beat slicing and I want to get into it and I just haven't gotten around to it. But, uh... Yeah, and I, I cannot figure out what happened or why they can't, why they don't work anymore. But uh, for those of you who don't know, beat slicing is you can you can take a drum loop and then you can you can uh, the drum loop is like a piece of audio that's like you know the sound of of like a drum piece, and then you can take that audio and then slice it up uh, so that like each piece is like an individual sample and then you could like in theory you could take each of those pieces and play it like a drum kit or something and it's and it sounds really cool like it sounds different than just like a drum machine does it has like an interesting like texture to it and i love it and i need to get into it more and i just haven't been able to like i haven't gotten around to it um i love the sound of it and i was using these like pre-sliced drum loops in elements or in this evolve thing uh to make a lot of the drum sounds in FTL, and ever since I like, you know, got a new system and like upgraded everything, those map loop slices don't work, and I don't know why. Yeah, I should probably just reinstall it. That might 
might actually fix it. All right, all right, but this isn't helping us. Let me let me see what what else we got here. I'm taking way too long to figure this stuff out. Big organic drums. Pretty fun. Great sounds. You have to really spend some time to figure out what each sounds like. built in. You know what we could, uh, let me see here, maybe turn that reverb off too. Scale asks, when creating a score, are you thinking in terms of storytelling or what, or some other creative device? I'm usually going by aesthetics, like the aesthetic of the game itself to inspire me. And also it's like, you know, what the designers intend, because I work with the designers of the game as well. But yeah, often I'm inspired by art in a game. All right, some of you longtime viewers will recognize what the technique that I'm using here. Put this aside, we're going to record another one.
you. Oh, never mind.
right, this is in a pretty good place. Uh, let's put this here too, so we have the consistency. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do was make this last bit here, starting from this point here, to to be more dramatic and like final. Uh, Mendicant asks, did you ever release that 80s groove or something or other piece from six months or so ago? I believe so. Uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's on the Music Workbench EP, which I just released a few weeks ago. All right, so what we really want this, like, okay. Um... Hey, Peter Thomas. So what I want this to do more like, uh, let's see here. sound but we'll, let's try oh I didn't realize what I was doing here hang on
Hey, Green Goblin Man. Thank you. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, or if you're new here, feel free to ask. Um, I'm happy to answer questions while I'm doing this. Green Goblin Man asks, "How do you? How did you get into the mus the video game music biz?" Well, it took a lot of time and work, and uh, a whole lot of luck. Uh, I originally moved from Maine to California to get closer to the game industry, and uh, I spent uh, many years teaching myself music theory. Um, I went to a two-year school program, college program for recording, um, like recording bands in a studio. <clears throat> uh, not necessarily the best path, uh, it just happens to be the path that I took. Um, once I got to California, I, I uh, well, actually, once I got to California, I took a whole bunch of different jobs that had nothing to do with the game industry, but I spent a lot of time practicing, learning, um, following the game industry, and then when I got started to get really serious about it, I started going to uh, game developer events like the Game Developers Conference. Uh, I would go to game jams. I started to, to uh, <clears throat> get involved in like the indie gaming scene as it started to rise up back in like 2008, 2009. Um, and then uh, got attached to Gravity Ghost, which was my first like gig with like a professional game developer. And uh, a friend of a friend got me attached to FTL and then FTL exploded and then I could do this full time, um, which is what I'm doing now. A lot of it has to do with the luck of, of being attached to FTL. Goblin Man, you can read a whole lot more about it on my blog. There's an article called My Most Important Advice to an Aspiring Game Musician, and it kind of summarizes my sort of how I got into the business <clears throat> in a bit more detail than what I just said. Um, I'm sure somebody in the chat can link to that blog, which would be great. Thank you. thing we want to do is add some rises. So I'm going to go to contact and rev rises. Thanks, Monk of Destiny. So if you follow that link, there's a great article that I wrote a few years ago on sort of how I got into what I'm doing. All right, so I think we want two bars plus tails.
that's nice. I like that too. Let's uh, let's take a listen. Well, we don't even need to play this because, oops, which one was it? This one. That sounds like. Turn it up a little. Yeah, we should go back and listen to the whole thing here. Hang on.
let's uh, duplicate this. Whoa, what did I just do? All right, I want another rise right here when it transitions. Not a, you know, one that's not quite as dramatic. Uh, so. And it doesn't need to be as long. Something like that. I'm hitting the wrong. I'm hitting a uh, Ableton shortcuts again. That's the right idea. It's still a little loud though. Here, let's try that again. Still pretty loud. Now let's go back a bit more to here. Sounds pretty good. We'll leave it at that for now. Maybe it needs to be an octave down like that. Hang on. Let's see what that sounds like. <clears throat>
still not, I don't know, something about it's not right. Let's try that higher note again. Just not sure. Well, anyway, uh, let's listen to the whole thing again. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. All right, all right. Uh, next step, now that we've finished with composing, we're done. Also, I see we got 45 viewers. This is awesome. This is like, uh, I haven't had this many viewers since, I don't know, quite a while ago. Um, so, uh, welcome. If there are a lot of new people, um, welcome to the stream. I do this every week. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, no question, there's no stupid questions. I'm willing to answer whatever. Uh, and as, as my regular viewers can attest, I'm very patient with answering questions. Um, 
All right, so we're done with composing. I'm just going to declare it done. Um, next comes mixing. So we're going to go through and make sure <clears throat> everything's mixed well. We can hear it all pretty well. It's already pretty good. Hello, Cool Rain. Thanks for joining. Uh, oh, so anyway, yeah. So we got the composition done. I'm going to go through and, and do some mixing. So uh, first thing I do is we're gonna we're gonna look at the entire mix here. Uh, whoops, it went away. Oh, that just makes it go away entirely. Um, there we go. Now it's now it's visible. I did a little trick to make it visible on this screen. Okay, so this will show us the frequency spectrum of the entire mix, because this is the main stereo out. Thanks, Master Sword. Uh, yeah, Eratosami, doing doing keyboard shortcuts is like takes a long time. I spend a lot of time setting up my keyboard shortcuts for Cubase, and I mean this is over the course of like ten years, and I have it like down to a science. And whenever I find that I'm doing a particular menu item a lot, that's when I'm like, okay, I probably need to do a keyboard shortcut. Uh, anyway, so we're going to listen to this. Uh, this will be the whole frequency spectrum, and we can see where it's like maybe too much. It'll, I'm, my guess is there's going to be a lot in the lower ranges. Hey, thanks, Rapallo. Rapallo Games. Uh, we already have this vintage warmer, which is a compressor. Uh, that's already on the entire mix. I just like the sound that it makes. So uh, we may alter this a little bit as we go, but uh, I, it's probably going to just stay where it is. Um, this is the recorder. This just uh, sends this to OBS. So we're going to go back and listen to the whole thing, and we're going to watch this. OK, this is pretty normal. See, like, see how this is already like blasting up to the top? So we're gonna have to reduce the volume on some things. Okay, mix isn't too bad, but you can tell it's like there's way more going on in the lower ranges here in the, like the bass area. Um, most of that is probably just this this uh, bass here. 
Uh, Mendicant asks, what are the disadvantages of routing the audio output through a USB headset instead of a standard line-out pair of headphones? I actually have no idea. Uh, I imagine that there's not really that much difference. Should be should be okay either way, as long as your headphones are good. Um, I can't... I don't really know, because I, I just always use a uh, audio card and then, like, a, a audio device and then plug in standard headphones. Um, the only time I've ever used USB headphones is when I'm playing like Overwatch and I'm using like a headset with, with a mic. Uh, I don't really know, but it, it shouldn't, I can't imagine it being a real problem. All right, so this thing needs some work. Let's listen to this one by itself. We could put a compressor on this. We should probably just turn it down first. That could be like the very first thing that you do to make the mix a little better. Oops, oh it's... Oh, I see. I'm gonna turn it down a little to... let's see here. Okay, so you'll notice that I turned down this uh, the bass line and it didn't significantly like worsen the entire mix. Like it's, it still sounds good even though I turned it down and and thus making it better because it you know it's better on the overall overall mix. Um, Azimuth asks, Ben, do you have do you have to run any special quality checks for preparing master copies for wider distribution, for example, iTunes use? Uh, not really. I just do my usual mixing and then send it off. Uh, I was This is the first time I've ever heard of uh, the zero tolerance policy on anything that causes clipping. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never heard of that, and I don't do anything special for that. It's the... The, the stuff I send to iTunes is the exact same mix that I put on Bandcamp um, and put in the games. So, yeah, I guess, I guess not. Now, uh, let's try... I'm going to try to put it... Whoop, that is not what I meant to do. Oh, crap.
here we go. Um, this thing I didn't want. I'm gonna try add, putting a compressor on this just to see how it goes. I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe not need it. Whoops, wrong compressor. That's not what I wanted. I want the multiband compressor. It probably will wreck the sound of this thing, but let's try it anyway. Actually, that sounds still sounds really good. If we listen to it by itself, you might be able to hear the difference. Let me. Uh, it's pretty subtle. It's it's the very low end. It's actually lower than like what the note sounds like. Here's with it on, and then when when this lights up yellow, it's going to be with it off. be good to put on it. Um, Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna keep that on and see how the whole mix sounds with it. Um, I think it it wrangles in some of the really low registers, which we don't really necessarily need. Um, yeah. So Azimuth, I've I've submitted lots of stuff to iTunes and nothing's been rejected so far. So I guess I'm doing it right, even if I'm not following, if I'm not doing anything special. <laughs> Uh, his maestro asks, do you copyright your music before you send it? Well, in the U.S. at least, uh, things are automatically copyrighted when you make it. Um, I suppose doing, like, a formalized copywriting process can help you legally. I've never worried about copyright stuff. Uh, and it's never, so far, has not been a problem. For me, in particular, it's pretty easy for me to defend like my ownership of the music like there's plenty of record of me on the internet like public record of me owning this all the music that I make so it would if something ever came up it would I think it wouldn't be particularly difficult for me to defend myself if I needed to but I don't think it's much of an issue um, I've never had to worry about copyright uh, Rapolo Games asked, do you use ozone much during mastering? Yes, I do. And that will be the next step after we're done with mixing. Hmm. Why am I not getting sound? Okay, there we go. too loud this rise so I'm gonna immediately do a little edit here turn it down a little let's go listen to it again that's better <clears throat> all right so the next thing is these might be a little too loud Too. That's better already. Maybe they don't need compression. 
impression. Let's listen to it again. There's gonna be a lot of repeating sections when you're when you're doing mixing, but that's okay. Okay, thanks, hi, uh, I Dragonarian. Thanks for joining, and I hope to see you next week. Uh, this show will be back next Saturday. Uh, we'll be doing a new piece. It should be fun. Oh, thanks, Azimuth. Yeah, I never, I never even heard of the mastered for iTunes thing. I don't, I don't use iTunes myself. Well, I, I sort of use it, but I don't buy anything from iTunes. Um. So I don't really know much about it. I'm trying to connect with Apple Music so I can like have an artist page and like edit stuff and and I just signed up for that. But yeah, I don't know a whole lot about iTunes. My my focus is on Bandcamp and Spotify. Those are my two those are my two money makers. All right, let's go back and listen to this again. stand to go down a little bit too. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Just a little. Let's see how that sounds. one so we take this and we grab it and we move it up just a little bit So this part sounds cool at first, right? Uh, this is the rev part here. Sounds cool, it fits, I love it, but it gets kind of, it just kind of disappears as soon as the other instruments come in.
right here. It's just like, might as well not be there. Well, maybe not. there so maybe we need to do some volume changes stretch this out a bit so have more control beat one and Aratasami says you haven't uploaded your streams to YouTube in a while yeah and one of my one of the things on my to-do list for today is to get everything up exported to YouTube so that should happen today or tomorrow So yeah, Spotify has become a pretty significant source of my income. And the more I talk about it on Twitter, the more I more listeners I get on Spotify, which directly equates to more money. So it's a it's a pretty significant form of my income. Listening to my music on Spotify, it totally helps me out. So it's a good it's a totally valid way to support me. So yeah, listen away on Spotify and I'll be adding more and more albums as we go. All right, so uh, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, I was increasing this. So couldn't really hear it very much in this last part, but it might be cool if it, if it increased uh, near the end with everything else. Let's hear. So can you guys tell me, I'd like to hear, uh, I, I hear, I see a couple of people in the chat saying they don't like Spotify. Uh, please let me know what it is you don't like about Spotify, because man, I love it. I use it every day. <clears throat> um, I use it when I'm listening at home. I use it when I'm here in the studio, and which is also at home, but it's my home studio. Uh, and listening to... Um, I use it to listen to reference stuff. Uh, I use it when I'm running. I put it on my phone and I listen to albums while I when I go running every morning. Um, it is Spotify is the service that I had been wanting for like 20 years. Um, I love it, uh, but I'd love to hear why other people don't like it. Um, 
just interested uh, as feedback so I know like what what might be keeping people from using it or whatever like what I can do to improve my use of it Um, Azimuth asked, do you know whether you get people discovering you on Spotify indirectly, i.e. not following you by, uh, by uh, following one of your links? Uh, that's a good question. I think that data is available. Um, there are there are a few people that discover me through, usually it, it's through playlists that other people make that include my music. And there are a couple of those. There's an official playlist, like an official Spotify playlist that uh, has a couple of my tracks in it from FTL, I think. And um, that does get a few people, but it's not it's not that much. I think mostly it's it's fans already. Biggest beat one says the biggest complaint I've heard is people say I just don't use I just use Pandora I guess not realizing you can have a radio mode on Spotify. Yeah, Spotify also has a radio mode and it has curated playlists which I love. Their their curated playlists are really good. Um, Spotify does allow you to listen offline uh, if you I believe you need an account uh, or I'm sorry I believe you need a premium account to do the offline play. You like download. Um, you can download the tracks and then you can listen to them offline, which I use also. Hmm, interesting, Monk of Destiny. I guess I don't quite... Accepted, like, file formats, you mean? Yeah, and I mean, there are a lot of services now that are just like Spotify. I just got on the Spotify bandwagon real early. And that's why I like tend to use it more. Um, but I, me personally, I don't really care about file formats. I'll listen to MP3s like happily. Um, I I honestly generally can't tell the difference between like a FLAC and a really high quality MP3. Um, and I I play Spotify in high quality mode, which is like much higher quality file format. But yeah, like. I, I totally like Amazon Music is basically the same service as Spotify these these days. Um, and I download a lot of stuff too. And I just I just use multiple music players depending on what I'm listening to at that time. Um, like sometimes when I'm running, I'll use the Bandcamp app and listen to albums that I bought on Bandcamp. I guess I'm just used to using a lot of different programs and that helps. Turn this down. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, the Bandcamp app does allow for, I believe it allows for offline listening. Actually, I got it. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh, you'll have to look it up. I'm going to get back to mixing here. The 
these drums are probably too loud. They sound cool. Hey, Evo Doc. Yeah, I mean, I totally get what you're where you're coming from, Monk of Destiny, about file formats. Like, oh, I can't add this file to Spotify or whatever, because I've had the same issue. I just gave up on trying to add files to Spotify, and I just use other apps to listen to music. I usually have iTunes to listen to everything else in my library. Um, and I can just have both apps open, or both apps on, my, on whatever machine I'm using. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I totally get, like, you want to have your entire library in one place seamlessly. I just gave up on that years ago, so I just don't really care anymore. And I just love, like, when I want to listen to an album, uh, it's there on Spotify. And I know I'm supporting the artist. And now that I'm, you know, that I am an artist who gets... Um, who like gets money f through Spotify? I can tell you, like, their payment is pretty fair. Like, I make a pretty good amount of money from it every month, and I'm not a huge artist. I make more than what big, like, big name artists claim to get through Spotify, which makes me think it's just their record label takes all the money before they can get it, um, and it's not really Spotify's fault. I think uh, I could be wrong. But my income's pretty good from Spotify, so I love it. And I encourage anyone to support it if they were thinking about making the jump to it and hadn't decided. I think they are pretty fair uh, with their distribution. Alright, so what I was saying earlier was these drums are probably too loud. sound cool, but we probably should turn them down a little. sound the same. I'm going to move some of them around here. That's cool.
What is this magic? We should go back and listen to the whole thing anyway, so I'll go back and uh, let's start from the beginning here. Right now, uh, we finished writing on this thing for the most part, uh, and now we're doing mixing. We're trying to make this into a good mix. It still needs some work. Okay, so that's the whole thing. I was deliberately trying to make like a bit of a shorter piece so we could actually finish it within a few episodes. Originally the plan was two episodes, but it kind of turned into three. Maybe that'll be the format from now on, I don't know. Uh, okay, so there's one other thing I want to add, and that is here when this thing ends. classic uh, noise splashes here that I've done in a few other ones. So let's do Omnisphere. Very easy to make a noise splash with that. So first we do noise and we add a huge amount of release. Here we go. We can add a filter. Sounds pretty good. that we have for a lot of this track. Maybe a bit heavier. Turn it way down to start with. All right, now let's see that, how that sounds. Better. A little bit. 
That's probably good. Uh, this is not for Into the Breach. Too many synthesizers for that. Uh, this is just uh, something we did for the live stream. sink. Uh, EvoDoc asks, how does Cubase work? All calculation made by CPU or is there some hardware acceleration? Uh, most of it's done by the CPU. Uh, there is some hardware acceleration with the Focusrite, uh, Scarlet Focusrite uh, audio device that I have. Uh, however, I don't really know the details of how it works. I should probably read up on that sometime. Um, so speaking of Into the Breach, I would like to do a music workbench with some Into the Breach music. Um, we're not really showing off the game yet, so I don't really know if I can do it, because I'd like to do it with like with visuals sort of the game showing. Um, I'll talk to the talk to the developers, the rest of the team, and see what they think about doing me doing at least one show where I'm showing off some Into the Breach stuff. It would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, it probably won't happen anytime soon because I think they, they want to keep like the game itself pretty, uh, pretty much under wraps right now. They have not really yet really uh, embraced the modern like live stream game dev concept. They're not too big on it. I think it's awesome, but it's not really their thing. So may not happen. We'll see. Sounds like it's overloading here near the end. Uh, let me get the stereo out mix out in here. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Basically, we're just bashed into the top there. Uh, Rapallo Games asks, you did the trailer music too, I take it. Yes, that's that was my music as well in the the music in the trailer for Into the Breach. Um I agree, Starlight Skies, it is a great way to promote the game, and I think I feel like they should do it. I know that they won't. And I also know that they like they're in a pretty good position where they don't necessarily need to promote the game as much. So it's not it's not as big a problem for them as it would be for other devs. Um, that's just sort of like the privileged position they they're now in, uh, but I still think it would be worth doing. But you know, it's the, it's their game. It's up. It's totally up to them.
You know what? This probably has a lot of... Eh, actually, it's not too bad. Hmm. Get that filter up a little bit more. Splash at the end, maybe? I don't know. Probably not necessary. It's kind of cool. I don't know. What do you guys think? Splash at the end or no splash at the end? I will let you guys vote on that. Hey, Allison's in the chat. Allison just got a haircut. I haven't seen it yet, though. All right, let's listen to the whole thing again. Man, it sounds pretty cool. I'm digging it. Uh, still waiting on ukulele workbench streams. That would be awesome. Uh, Monsieur For Me <laughs> asks, Ben, did you start music by playing an instrument at first? Not really, actually. Um, my first foray into music was like pulling out this ancient keyboard that we had in the attic from the 80s when I was like oh, 11 or 12 and I used to just sit on my floor and play around with it even though I couldn't play any music with the keyboard. I guess I did start by playing trumpet in the school band but I wasn't very good at it and I wasn't that into it. Um... But yeah, I definitely got into like producing music before I got into like playing an instrument. Uh, I taught myself banjo and I did teach myself piano eventually. Um, I'm not particularly good at either. And now I'm learning guitar. Um, the last 
the last couple of years. I was more dedicated like two years ago to the guitar thing and I've kind of dropped off, but I have been playing a lot for Into the Breach. There's a lot of guitar stuff in Into the Breach and I'm very excited about it. it sounds cool. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I really want to get into like, uh, get back into practicing. For, for There was like a year where I was practicing an hour every day of guitar and I, I did go from like absolutely nothing like no skill to like like uh sort of intermediate level player but uh yeah i gotta i gotta practice more anyway this is looking pretty good although it is, does get really like noisy and overloaded near the end so i gotta figure out how to fix that and i'm still not really sure if i want this you know what maybe we'll do make it really quiet we'll have the splash but it'll be like a quiet splash. Like that. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Bendicant. It was a Casio, I think, but I don't remember what it was. It was the one that had the the 80s pop song Nightbird as the uh, as the demo track. Oh cool, you're a trumpet player also, monsieur. It was uh I learned a lot from playing trumpet for sure. I definitely learned like basic uh a very very basic like music theory like reading sheet music from playing trumpet which was very useful notice now uh, now that we've done this mixing look at how uh, the frequency spectrum is much more equal now than it was before so we've improved the mix doesn't need to be so loud. I'm just going to start turning things down after increasing the volume on everything. You guys not hearing the audio? Have it showing up on all of my. My levels are showing okay. Okay, cool. do a compressor on these drums too. Just put it, leave it at the default maybe.
uh, Rapallo Games asks, do you use much panning automation? I don't use as much as I feel like I should. I often forget about panning. Um, I should probably think about it more with this. Anyway, let's go back and listen to the whole thing. There was a lot in FTL for sure. Um, I just feel like these days I tend to neglect it. Sounds good. Okay, so some techniques that I can talk about that I usually do with mixing that I can't really demonstrate is like, one, I turn it down. Like just now when I was listening to this, I turned my the volume on my headphones way down. Um, that actually can help with like uh, your mixing levels. Like when you turn it way down, I don't know, it makes it easier to hear the entire mix somehow. The other thing I do is I have this thing called an Aventone Mix Cube, and you may have seen me mention it on Twitter or in one of my art blog posts. Uh, it's this small speaker. Let's see if I can grab it. Nope, it's not going to move. Okay, so there's a speaker here um, called a Mix Cube, and it, it kind of sounds a bit tinny, and it's mono. Um, and it's sort of a, a sort of a gold standard used in a lot of different uh, recording studios for final mixing. You listen to the mix through that thing, and it doesn't it doesn't sound amazing. Like it's not a bad speaker, but it it doesn't sound nearly as rich and full as like normal speakers or your headphones. And the idea is that if you can get the mix sounding good and hearing everything through that speaker, the mix cube, then it will probably sound good on any speaker setup. And so usually after I've done the mix, like just now, I would switch over to the, the mix cube and listen to it through there. And uh, that usually like will point out to me some things like, you know, if I listen to it on that mix cube, sometimes certain instruments won't come through and I'll be like, oh, okay, I need to fix that a little or whatever. Um, and that kind of... <clears throat> That can really help a lot. Um, another thing you can do is like just make, once you've done doing your mixing like I just did, you can export it really quick uh, and listen to it on other speaker setups like in your car or in your home stereo or something and listen to it in other setups and then that can that can also help. Any, it's, it's, listening to it on as many different speaker setups is uh, really useful. As many as you can. Um, we got a couple of questions. Monk of Destiny asks, how's Operation Desocialization going so far? You mean Super Hermit Mode? Uh, 
Well, I only just started it yesterday, so I'm not really sure how well it's going just yet. But I've been pretty productive in the last two days, so I guess it's all good. Um, Mendicant asks, Ben, have you ever done a foray into composing DOS C64 retro style music? Um, I mean, a lot of people say that my music is like chiptune-esque, even though I'm not necessarily agreeing with that always. Um, but I've never tried to do like an authentic sounding recreation of old hardware. Um, I'm really excited to get Super Audio Cart sometime, which is a collection of instruments that are uh, authentic recreations of old hardware. Um, sometime I'll get that. Just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's about as close as I've gotten. The closest I've ever gotten to pure chiptunes is that, uh, oh, what's it called? Colony Ship on FTL Advanced Edition. <clears throat> anyway. So, we're, I'm going to say we're done mixing this. Let me listen to this last part again. So now, let's take this and just turn it down here. Whoop, that's not what I meant to do. Put the end point here, end point there. All right, we're going to export this uh, as like the initial file. I call it the first wave. So let me see here. Making sure there's no secret stuff. Now this is from the live stream EP. All right, so I call this futures. Uh, futures first wave. And well, we'll, we'll to save time, I'm just going to do it into the into the. live stream EP folder. I don't hear anything. Whoa, hey. Um, all right, so. So let's close this, save, and then we'll open up the live stream. Uh, so in order to do like, um, uh, 
uh, in order to do, <laughs> in order to do, uh, like, uh, mastering, you have to have other audio tracks that you've done. And so the way to do that is you just like put in previous tracks that you've done into a file. And then so you can load up, well, I'll just do it and you'll, you'll understand in a second here. So we'll just, we'll just start out a new thing, uh, empty. And so it seems appropriate we'll use like the uh the live stream EP stuff to Um, compare to this. So I'm going to load up a couple of these tracks. Oh, whoops. Yeah, whatever. Now, uh, Mendicant asks, do you use plug chip sounds in FTL? Because some tracks I get the FDS vibe, uh, Civil especially. Uh, I did use it a little bit, but most likely the stuff you're hearing is actually, uh, oops, not master tracks. I don't want to do master. Um... Pair it with other first waves. Hmm. Um. Mostly, most of the, most likely, what you're hearing is uh, reactor stuff in FTL. I did use chip sounds a little bit, but mostly it was reactor for a lot of the really basic sounding synths. Oh, wait, no, I do want to do... I'm sorry, guys. Master Waves. Boop. So I'm going to load up three of these. This, this will all make sense in a bit here. All right, so we've got three... pieces from uh, the live stream EP. We are going to mute all of them for now. And then, oops, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Here's the new piece. I'm going to bring it in here. Ooh, it is a bit, it's a kind of uh, hitting the edges there and overloading a little, ooh, especially right there. Maybe we need to go back. Boy, this is going to be a long episode, huh? be too that's too hot I think I need to I think I need to lower it a bit Whoa, you shouldn't see that. Secret stuff.
Hmm. So we're probably going to have to go back and continue to do mixing so that we don't have that overloading. You'll notice with all these other tracks that they don't they don't overload anywhere. Well, maybe a little bit at the end there, but uh, we got to fix that with the track that we're working on now. Hmm. This might be a bigger job than I can do right now. Well, thank you for joining, Azimuth. I didn't want this to be four episodes long, but maybe it's okay. Maybe, uh, maybe next week we'll finish up with the... with mastering being then, and then we can cut it here. Because I think this is gonna take another, a, at least another half an hour just to do more mixing on this. Boy, I gotta figure out how to turn off those notifications, huh? Um, anyway. Yeah, I don't think, so yeah, it's going to probably take about 30 minutes just to do the rest of the mixing for this, and then we'll be doing the mastering after that. So I think I'm going to have to cut it now at two and a half hours, and then next week we'll pick up and finish off the track for reels. But uh, this has been a really fun episode, though. I, I've had a good time already. I hope this was like uh, educational for you guys. I know a lot of people have been asking for uh, been asking for um, mixing stuff, so I hope this was like useful for that. But yeah, I think in the future I'm going to try to keep each each piece down to three episodes. Although this is, originally I said it was going to be two. So, you know, who knows. Everything takes longer than you're expecting, I guess. But yeah, thanks everybody for joining in. And uh, I will be back on Monday with Allison for more Outlast 2. And then uh, back on Thursday for the Indie Roundup. And then again here on Saturday for more Music Workbench. Uh, but hey, you know what? We can listen to this one last time before we finish it off. <laughs> Sorry, Noxiel EDM. We'll listen to this one more time before we go. And then you can... And then I'll... I'll uh... I'll end it. So here we go. If you guys have any questions, you can ask while this is listening, and I'll be able to answer them afterwards. Oh, wait. <laughs> I have to actually set this thing up again. Boop. All right, that should do it. Yes.
All right. So we got one question from Mendicant. Uh, before we close, what do you think of covering a notable track as a first foray into music? Um, maybe not necessarily your first, but certainly a good early thing to do uh, to like learn a lot of advanced techniques really fast. Um, so yeah, I would I would definitely I think it's a cool idea uh, to do try to do some covers as some of your early exercises, um, and you can start by like trying to recreate it exactly, or you could just like. I don't know if she's gonna be show off her hairstyle. Um, anyway, you can start off by trying to recreate the piece exactly, and then like just sort of take it off in your own direction, like midway through. Or, oh, I see. She's she's put something in the chat here. Let me go fix it real quick. Cool. Um, or you can you can just like try to do like a your own kind of put your own spin on it right from the start. And either way, I bet you'll still learn a lot. All right, okay. Uh, here comes Allison. I'm coming to do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> There's you. Hey, whoa, awesome, side shave. Oh, I love <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know if this is coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks great. Uh, oh, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I had been planning on uh, growing it out until like an hour before the haircut. Yeah, that was hilarious. You're like, you know what? I'm thinking I'm doing the, the side shave again. Yeah, and and I asked him what he thought, and he didn't even like say anything. He just gave me this like really cute, mischievous <laughs> smile. I was, and like, I was like, yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> it's on. Yeah, for months she was saying, oh yeah, I'm just gonna grow it out. I don't want to do I the side was. shave. I yeah. was. I did grow it out quite a bit. You guys know, but yeah. I anyway. love it. Looks great. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. I will see you guys next week.